It's been a really lovely day here today. Well, apart from that, of course. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick and you are watching Astro Exploring. In tonight's video, I am going to be photographing the Sol Nebula. So join me in my back garden where I share the wonderful world of astrophotography with you all. What's he doing? What's he doing? All right, so for those that haven't heard of it, the Sol Nebula is an emission nebula that is in the constellation Cassiopeia, and it's going to be in the uh, northern part of the sky. It's going to clear my roof round about half past 11 tonight. Already got a couple of nights in on this target a couple of nights ago, but I want to add a lot more data to it to try and uh, really stretch the data that you'll see in the in the final image make sure you stick around for that at the end of the video and the setup that i'm using is this one right here which will be very familiar to those of you who have watched um, these imaging sessions on my channel before if you haven't i'm going to take you through it very quickly but i'm going to be going through in more detail the question that i get asked most often and that is how to connect the dslr to the telescope what adapters have i got what equipment have i got how do i do it i'll break that all down for you in this video so when you take your 72 ed out of the box it's got this little adapter on it that you connect eyepieces to if you want to actually look through the telescope rather than do astrophotography so in our case we're going to go ahead and take that off and it just unscrews this isn't the only way that you could attach the imaging train but it is the way that i do it and i am going to say it's probably the best way to do it so when you buy the um the field flattener uh, well the flattener reducer for the 72 ed what you actually receive is the field flattener for the 80 ed which comes with this adapter it comes with the adapter so if you buy it for the 72 ed it comes with the adapter you don't need to buy that separately um, i got mine from first light optics i'll put a link to it in the description down below and essentially that just screws on to the end there the reason for this adapter is that the thread size on the um, tube assembly is different than it is on the ated and so without that adapter you won't be able to to screw that in so if you already happen to have an ated with this flattener you would still need that adapter otherwise it won't fit so we go ahead and screw that on there like so now i'm connecting a dslr camera to this so what i need is an m48 to uh, canon adapter because i'm using a canon dslr they do these for nikon cameras as well you can see there 48 mil to canon eos so all you do is screw this onto the end of the flat nut like so then you take your camera mine's got the clip-in optolong l enhance inside and you want to line up this red dot with the red dot that is on the m48 adapter and that just twists into place just like it would if you were attaching a camera lens so that is how all of that attaches to the telescope all right guys so i am polar aligned i've gone through my star alignment routine i did a one star alarm alignment on calf because that is a star in cassiopeia which is um, where we're imaging so now all i need to do is slew to a target so the soul nebula is i see 1848 and then enter a couple of times it's not going to move too far at all. That's such a great noise. I love that noise. I keep standing on slugs, which, um, well, I suppose it's my fault for walking barefoot across the garden, but um, that's, still, that's still pretty gross. Um, <laughs> anyway, so there's a couple, of, um, a couple of challenges at play tonight. Um, the first one of those being the temperature. Um, which is why I'm still wearing shorts and t-shirt and uh, walking around barefoot at 11 o'clock at night. Um, it's still about 20 degrees, so naturally with a DSLR, uh, the sensor is going to get very hot and that's going to add a lot of thermal noise to my images. So hopefully 
um, with calibration frames uh, we can remove a lot of that but it's still going to um, still not ideal conditions for, for imaging with a with a DSLR this is where a, a cooled CMOS uh, camera really comes into play and the other challenge tonight is the fact that there's an 84% moon tonight so um, that is naturally very bright in the sky 84% um, however with the part of the sky that I'm shooting in over towards the north in Cassiopeia um, I'm shooting at the the opposite side of the sky to where the moon actually is so it will still have an effect but much less of an effect than it would if I was shooting somewhere to the south and now that I'm polar aligned star aligned and I've done a couple of test shots I'm now going to set my images going using my shutter release cable um, it's still I probably need to wait about another half an hour before I get the images going but the um, this has a, a delay function on it so I can sp set my exposure length tonight they're going to be uh, two minutes and I can set my interval the time between each exposure and how many of those I want to take um, but I can set a delay so I can I can say I don't want these images to start for half an hour which is which is great uh, this is about a tenner off Amazon and I'll put a link to that in the description down below but um, it's a really great great bit of kit if you're not um, if you're not using a laptop or if you're using a, a simpler setup um, like the the Star Adventure, and so a, a very quick overview of the imaging equipment that I've used tonight. Obviously, you've seen most of that already, but I'm using my Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED, which is an apochromatic doublet refractor. Attached to that, you've seen the the field flattener DSLR, and um, I'm also I'm also using the Clipping Optolong L Enhance filter which will really improve my uh, my images on the Sol Nebula tonight. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how those turn out. And the next video that I plan to release after this video is gonna be an Optolong L Enhance filter review. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and also remember to hit the bell notifications so that you don't miss that upload. And also remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, because that really helps me out. So I'm gonna go and set my images going now and I will show you the back of my camera with a two minute exposure so that you can see what you could reasonably expect of a two minute exposure on a nebulae with a DSLR and the Optolong L Enhance. All right, so I know I'm breaking uh, astrophotography rule number one by using a white light, but I'm filming this on my phone and if I don't have a light on for some reason, it chops the edges off when it's just uh, black at the side. So um, please forgive me. Um, okay, so right. This is a what a two minute exposure looks like on the back of my camera um, and actually <laughs> you can actually you can see some red on there which is actually clearer on the recording than it is to my naked eye looking at the back of the screen which is uh, typical so it doesn't really highlight very well what I'm trying to explain does it really but um, trust me it <laughs> trust me it doesn't look as good uh, in real life as it does uh, on this on the camera there but still you can you can see how how difficult it would be to f try and frame up a target um, on the back of a DSLR camera when when that's all that you can see um, galaxy is much easier to do because they're really bright in the sky you'll always um, always see a galaxy um, on the back of the screen so that's really quite easy to sort out but um, but this not so much all right so my images are going now two minute exposures at ISO 800 and I'm going to run those through until about half past three in the morning when it's going to get too light to do any imaging so that's about four hours worth of imaging on top of the uh, two hours that I did the other night so um, six hours minus any subs that I need to uh, get rid of in stacking I hope you like the image that I'm about to share with you please leave a comment down below if you've ever photographed a Sol Nebula let me know if you like this target if you've never shot it before let me know if you plan to shoot it this season thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time